I seem to be the self-designated chair of the subcommittee. So I will, <laughs> I will open at one really early point, Doug, Mike was, but we'll, we won't worry about that. So um, I want to welcome everyone to the June 21st meeting of the design school building design subcommittee meeting. And we have most people here, so I will just open the meeting by making sure everyone can hear and be heard. Um, Doug? Yes. Thank you. Jonathan? Yes. Deb? Hi. Uh, Bruce? I'm sorry. It's what happens when you have a delay between meetings. I... That's all right. No, you know, you get to doing other things. And I... so, um, we're just starting. We're just starting now. So I know Doug, and Kathy, you said- Can I just say Rupert is coming. He's dealing with an emergency, a, a cooling emergency. So Please. I said- do do that. <laughs> so uh, Bru Doug had told me earlier that he could join, but only for an hour. So I, I'm not sure this is gonna take more than an hour, but I think we'll just start. So t um, let <clears> me just make sure I can open screen share. Okay, um, you are, I've opened it to being able to share your screen. Okay, uh, just as an overview, I don't think it will even take an hour. I mean, we are a week and a half away, give or take, uh, from the drawings going out. Normally, to be honest, we wouldn't be having a meeting uh, this close to the deadline, but we just wanted to tie up some loose ends. Uh, the last um, subcommittee, you asked us to look at a few things on the exterior, and they could have marginal cost implications. So very marginal. So we just wanted to confirm that with you. And then there's a couple other questions that we wanted to go over with you. So getting right into it. Um, one second. So I can share my screen. Looking at the site plan, um, one item that we have discussed tangentially, but never in detail, um, is a sign for the building on the site. Uh, the existing site sign exists right here to the east of the storage barn on what is going to be the uh, bus and service drop off. And as you may know, this is what it looks like. It's fairly simple landscaped around it. And then the question that we have for the committee is if we should include something uh, probably at the northern entrance um, where most of the traffic will be coming in uh, post the reconfiguration of the site. Uh, but we just have a few options for, um, well, examples, not really anything designed of what we could carry. So um, we could include it in the project and not have to add it if at some point it was decided that you wanted to do that, uh, which likely will. And then there's also the question of, this is currently the Fort River School. I don't know that it's a certainty that it will always be named the Fort River School. And so certain signs depend on how many letters you're buying and stuff. So we, we just have a quick discussion about that. This is a fairly pedestrian, almost catalog sign uh, that was part of a district-wide uh, signage standardization in one of our other towns, but uh, just maybe not the most unique or beautiful sign in the world, but it's uh, certainly does what the sign has to do uh, in terms of telling you where you are. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go through the options. Uh, here is a small site wall that was built at one of our schools, and it has um, pin attached lettering. Um, in the sense, it's very functional because the site wall is built and then the actual signage itself is applied. And so at the point of designing and locating the wall that the sign will be on, you don't actually have to know what the lettering says. And it uh, may be a bit more in keeping with uh, the site design. Uh, another option uh, that we have done is a precast panel within a site wall. Um, the letters are engraved and painted uh, for contrast. Um, unlike the previous option with the pin letters, obviously you have to know the name um, <laughs> when you're when you're designing it. So um, 
you, you could leave a little extra space, but you know, just Your talk name through it the here options. in 14 karat gold. Yeah. <laughs> Talking through the option so um, we can put an, appra an appropriate placeholder in the bid documents if, if you see that. Um, this is certainly a more elaborate, one of the more elaborate site walls that we've done. And I don't even know that there's an appetite for something like this or or the desire to design it. But we just want to give you the full spectrum of, you know, things that we have done, things that are out there. Um, I have not included um, what many elementary schools do, an illuminated sign with the ability to broadcast news. That seems anathema to... Um, the sensibilities of the people that we've spoken to in Amherst, but I could be wrong about that. So uh, we're hoping to have that uh, conversation about what we should include. Um, and then if anybody has any thoughts, desires, um, locations, type of signage, we can include the appropriate amount of detail and scope in the bid documents to get that um, and then during construction, we'll have to talk about the design. Uh, Doug? So a couple of a couple of things. I, I would agree with you that the sort of illuminated, um, you know, like LED sign with messaging is not really Amherst style. Um, so I would agree that that's not a sample we needed to have. Um, the, other, the, the other question I have is, are we placing or um, going to put the school name on the building itself? Um, and I asked that, you know, our middle school and high school have, you know, that sort of pin style lettering on both of the buildings. I didn't know whether we were considering that because, you know, from a sort of consistency of design, paralleling, that would be helpful. Um, I think personally, you know, having one on the north entrance because that's the general public entrance is is where I think we should have one. I don't know that we need one at both entrances, um, but I can also recognize that, you know, the south entrance will get used a fair amount you know, outside of school hours and that sort of thing. So may need to have one in each place. Um, but yeah, I didn't know if, if you had any thoughts or, or I haven't seen it on the renderings, but again, I'm looked closely about whether there's anything on the building itself and then whether that, you know, a, a sign should parallel sort of design wise that, that if it was the case. We, we, do, uh, we do have pin lettering on the building that uh, identifies the school name. Uh, and then when we get to the exterior portion of the building in a, in a few minutes, you can see where it's located and if there's thoughts on that. But the idea is to have it on the building. And, uh, you know, for consistency's sake, I agree, it would be nice to have the, the same sort of typeface and lettering on a, a sign. But, uh, you know, that's also, you know, that's why we're having a discussion to see what uh, the committee wants to see. And just just to be clear, we could do as little as relocate the existing sign. Reasons for doing that, we don't know. But perhaps that sign looks like other public building signs in the town. We've worked in communities where we've had we've added un, unlighted signs like that that were the same as other buildings in town. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, not having the LED sign. Also, the other decision is whether we want ground lighting on it. Uh, Tim showed you two adva uh, examples of masonry wall signs. One obviously had light fixtures in front of it. The Harold Wyman sign did not. Uh, and uh, whatever we do, we know that the planning board is going to want to hear from us. So I see two more hands, Bruce and then Jonathan. And I think I brought Tammy into the meeting. Um, yeah, Tammy's here too. So Tammy, we you just saw a flash. It's a, it's a discussion about the entryway where the cars come in, what kind of sign should go there. And whether we want anything at the other entryway and sign styles. Um, so that's what we're on. So Bruce and... Um, a couple of questions. Uh, I'm thinking that there's probably a, a longer discussion and I don't recall that it's been had, but maybe I wasn't in the meeting or the subcommittee meeting, but the signage uh, generally, I mean, are these the only two signs now that we're 
talking about. Uh, I know that we've got one on the front of the building, but um, there presumably are maybe other signs that we need to uh, be thinking about. Um, I'm not sure about that. That's the question. Um, uh, then the second thought or question is, it seems to me that just thinking about how this building might be used, or if it's only used by people in town, um, that, that people will know where it is. It may not need to be illuminated, but uh, but to the extent that we would have meetings that would be uh, more regional, I mean, that the, the venue uh, has uh, the capacity to be used for events that may uh, bring people from out of town, in which case we wouldn't necessarily be able to expect that people knew where the school was. And so they might need to be more specifically uh, identified and therefore also lit so that people, uh, because if it was used for uh, uh, those kind of events, they'd very they'd more likely perhaps be used uh, be, be at night than in the daytime. So it seems that some kind of illumination would be necessary. I'm also thinking that it, would it be important or useful to identify uh, north entrance and south entrance so that if you were instructing uh, on a, an event, whether it was a I don't know, a basketball, is because it, it, it seems that the, the north entrance is really the general purpose entrance, and maybe we want to encourage everybody to come in that way if it's an after-hours event. And then there might be a case for saying, no, we shouldn't identify the south entrance because that would potentially confuse people, or maybe it won't. I mean, it's because there's no real parking down there after hours, I suppose, although people could park all around the loop, perhaps. Uh, people who would want to play pick up basketball and so forth might choose to come in and park at the end of that uh, bus turnaround loop. Um, so I'm just trying to imagine uh, how the uh, usage patterns for various groups and various activities of various people in town and out are going to evolve and then um, and, 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 and not being able to wrap my mind completely around that. Um, uh, but once one has, then figure out what the signage should be so i'm am i am i over complicating this or is, is this uh, the signage typically seems to require an understanding of how people use things uh, or may use things and how the use patterns will evolve and so forth it can become quite complicated and i fear that i'm perhaps uh, going overboard here but but if but now would be the time uh, i just so i just want to get people's reaction to whether i'm uh um, stirring the pot too much here. So let's let's go through. I see Jonathan, Deb, and then I have comments. Um, so, and one is a reaction to Bruce. Mine, yep. Jonathan. Sure. Uh, so no, I, I don't necessarily think that Bruce is is off base on, on on these questions or the or the level of detail. Um, I would think that. Well, before I forget it, one I don't think the town has a. Uh, a standard when it comes to signage, or if we do, it's not clear to me <laughs> that we do. Um, two, uh, I definitely wouldn't want to just relocate the existing sign. It, it, we need a new sign. Um, I like the pin cell personally, um, but I think we should differentiate clearly between the two entrances. I think that there should be a the, the building, the, the site sign should be at the north entrance, and um, while there should be some signage at that south entrance, it's you know, clearly indicated that it's bus drop off or delivery or or something like that, because I think the intent is really to to have people use the north entrance um, and reinforce that uh, so that we get uh, people's patterns to uh, change and get used to not coming in the south entrance. If if I could build on what Jonathan's saying, I traffic consultant for the site signage based on the traffic pan uh, package actually at the curb cut to the south entrance has a sign that says authorized vehicles only. Yeah. Uh, and I think I don't have them from me. Hours could be added to that, but that's basically uh controlling who goes in there so i don't know if you if having a building site sign saying what it is with that is sending a mixed message 
the the existing sign is actually pretty far into the site, well well beyond the decision point. Um, so if we were to have a sign, it would want to be, I would say, at the north entry, you know, visible, um, able to be seen. We could fairly, uh, and that would tell where where things are going. As far as any of Bruce's questions about all the other signage, actually, Bruce, we've seen and talked about all the interior signage as as part of going over the interior design. So basically, the decision points for that have all been reviewed and discussed with the group. So it's really the site sign that, frankly, we looked at the calendar and looked at the site and said, whoops. We, we ought to include something here, or at least talk about it. So the committee knows that uh, there might be something to be added. Deb? Uh, yeah, um, as someone who spends a fair amount of time getting lost, driving to other school sites, looking for uh, athletic games, um, I would, make a plea for a large sign, <laughs> easy to see. I, mean, I understand tasteful, but I think understated signs are not as helpful as, as larger signs. Um, I do like the north south idea. I also like the idea of echoing uh, the design of the interior signage and having um, space for it to be bilingual. That's it. Uh, let's see, Rupert, and then I have a comment. Bruce, your hand is still up. I'm assuming it's just a remainder. Rupert. So um, am I loud enough? Yeah. Cool. Uh, Crocker Farm has signs visible from the street because the building isn't. Wildwood has signs visible from the street, even though the building is. Um, I think that we definitely should have signs indicating where the school is for our delivery drivers and for our out-of-town guests and for our grandparents who are doing pickup um, from out of town, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that the, the south entrance should probably be understated and it should probably say something like uh, service vehicles and buses only or something along those lines. Those are my thoughts. So uh, I'm echo echoing Rupert, um, large enough to be able to be seen from the street when you're before you're turning. And one of the criticisms when I remember the site review of the current Fort River School, when we went way back when conditions, it was signage wasn't very good. Um, if you if you didn't know, you usually passed the entrance before you knew it was there. The other, um, looking at this one, um, I also think wherever we put it, it shouldn't have foliage that's going to grow over it. Um, it should be big enough to see and not it. This is really pretty, but we have a, a playground area up here that you literally cannot see the entrance sign anymore because things are obstructing it. So those those were my two thoughts in terms of wayfinding around town. The town has signs. They may not be great but that say this way to Emily Dickinson, this way to such and such. So we could figure out in town adding to the Fort River School. Um, so we, we could add that somewhere, um, you know, um, at a juncture. Um, that's the, those have all gone through the planning board and we have some. Then my last thought is, I'd, I think making sure it's visible and carries the same theme but I wouldn't be as elaborate with lighting. I think we should spend as little as, this is Kathy's money, spend mm -hmm. as little as possible on signs that are visible um, and save the money for other kinds of things, another bench or something else. Um, so those are my, my thoughts on it. You asked at the beginning, um, we at one point mentioned a renaming of the school contest. And I think we've dropped that altogether both for all sorts of reasons. So I think it, this is still called the Fort River School. Um, and so so those are my, uh, most of my thoughts. You know, D D Deb, you said 
bilingual but Fort River School, other than the word school, you you wouldn't want to. You know, I think people have to identify their school by their name. It is this is the name of it. So I wouldn't clutter the sound very much, except for cars, you know, as people have said, cars entrance, um, authorized vehicles or service delivery and buses, or, you know, the the distinguish between these two entrances. And I will stop with that. Um, you know, some of these are too subtle. Some of the things like etched on stone, to me, was too subtle to be seen. Um, this one is because it's framed in white with white lettering, as long as that will hold up, will be seen. I think the purpose of the entrance and exit signs or the entrance and the bus are to tell people this is this is where you are. Um, it doesn't have to be as elegant as that beautiful one on stone. And uh, I see I, I've evoked uh, two more hands have gone up, Bruce and Deb. Bruce. Um, on the, the subject of lighting, Kathy, I kind of think that the shrine should be able to be seen at night, but it occurs to me to ask uh, at the north entrance, uh, can we depend on a streetlight? Is, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not familiar, but is there a streetlight that would, uh, mm -hmm. or could we position the sign appropriately from a signage point of view, but also take advantage of uh, any existing lighting? Does anyone know whether the street light up there? That that would that's an easy question to ask. You know, to, to get confirmed one way, including just get out there and take a look at it. Tim, can you go to the site plan? Yeah, I was gonna hold on. There is site lighting um along the drive and um it included if there is not a street light on Southeast Street. But I would recommend that if you want to make sure that it is visible, um, that the sign itself is illuminated. I mean, street lights are only getting better in terms of the light going directly down with a narrow beam and and preventing light pollution and and not lighting other than the driving surface and parking surface itself. Um, and, and then I just I, I don't think the contrast of a sign is, is going to be enough with spillover lighting. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna push a little bit on the bilingual. If we included elementary school in the signage, then there would be a, a logical translation in Spanish. I just really like the fact that we're um, a bilingual school, and with the school moving now towards a ninety ten percent instead of a fifty fifty percent um, program. Uh, I think that would be nice if kids could see that on their school sign. Tim, did you say more letters cost us more? Well, they do, but I I don't think that would be a, a driving factor <laughs> it's, here. It's more it's more de minimus. It, it, it's de minimis. It's more making the sign big enough. Um, you don't you don't want to have the planning school falling off the end of the. So if it's, if it's three levels, three three lines of text and four words versus two words, that's a, a big difference in terms of what we have to plan. That's all. So Jonathan Rupert. Uh, I guess I would would recommend that we don't um, don't. I mean, in the grand scheme of of the overall budget, planning for this sign is a relatively low cost item. Um, we should get an, I would advocate for a nice sign that was properly lit. Rupert. Uh, according, according to Google Maps, there is a pole on the school side of Southeast Street, just to the north of the uh, north entrance <clears throat> with a, with a uh, street light on it. I don't think that it would provide adequate lighting for any sign that would be, because it's designed to light the street, not the... Uh, the grassway. Um, I also wonder whether um, whether we can get reasonable um, solar lighting for the sun. So this is Margaret sharing the Google Maps. So there, as as Rupert says, there, it looks like there's not that these are always completely up to date. It looks like the closest street light is here. Um, so the this the moment here is not particularly well lit, which kind of makes sense because it it's previously been 
an exit, right? Um, not an entrance. Thanks, Margaret. Kathy, can I can I add one other thing? Um, sure. Which is um, just to observe. You know, I, I think this is a really interesting question because, again, it has been an exit, so there's a change, and really, you have people coming from two directions, right? You've got people who are coming this way, right? Who like turn the corner and um, have to decide where they're going to be. And then you've also got people coming, obviously, from the other direction. Um, so um, I'm really glad that Denise goes bring this up because I don't think it's necessarily an easy design problem, given the fact that you have to deal with really sign. You know, people, the people who work at the and uh, families who go to the school will have adapted to this seamlessly, but now you know it's a big change for everybody else. So. Oh, actually, I wanted to show one other thing. Kathy, can everybody see this? I found this sign online for the Emily Dickinson house, but I think this is their sign, not this, not the town sign, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. So, um, Bruce, is your hand back up? Yes, it is. Um... I just wanted to say, I'm, uh, since we have, uh, uh, Tim has mentioned that we have lighting, or maybe it was Rick, uh, lighting uh, uh, coming up. So there's kind of lighting and electricity heading in that direction, or maybe it's already there. Uh, so I would say, uh, yes, uh, obviously the street lights uh, is, a, is, a, is a, a poor substitute for what we really want. Uh, and I'm not sure that uh, I think solar lighting is ready for this kind of prime time, something that really has to endure. Uh, my general sense of solar lighting is it's great for piers in Maine, where you have a high summer use, which corresponds to the high light levels, uh, avail available energy levels. But in, in a winter climate where you really want them to work in the winter, um, mostly, um, I think uh, we shouldn't try and go with the solar uh, route for this particular sign, since we already have the electricity there. So I'm, I'm an advocate for a clear sign. Uh, for it to be lit and, uh, and 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 appropriate, as Margaret said, for dealing with traffic from coming from more or less equal numbers of uh, amounts of traffic coming from uh, both directions. If if I can distill, it is a difficult question, uh, not one to snap our fingers and come to a complete decision. <clears throat> At this point in time, I see, excuse me, the committee coalescing to having a sign of some type at the south entrance and the north entrance that can be seen by people going both directions that would in, that would imply a sign you know a sign that you know uh runs east west um <clears throat> a lighted sign for nighttime use as far as what's incorporated in the bid documents we could add the ground lighting to two locations to be coordinated with a future sign to be supplied by the owner. And then that sign could be procured uh, by whatever means is appropriate for uh, best practices based on the value of the sign. If the sign was to be a masonry sign, like a couple of them that Tim showed, that would want to be in the contract documents, but I think I've heard the group want to, I don't want to overreach, but leaning toward more mod modest expression of a, of a post and sign look. And uh, I'll just stop there and people can chime in to see if they are in agreement or not with what I just laid out. I, I, I'm in agreement, but I'm waiting to see others. And I see Margaret's hand is back up and Doug's hand is up. Well, I I was just going to chime in and say what Rick said, but let me emphasize it, that um, I 
not hearing a groundswell for the stone wall and knowing that the stone wall version is more expensive and that it's sort of atypical, I would say, for Amherst. I mean, when it, you know, back to the question about standards, I don't think I've seen this kind of sign, which kind of feels in the Amherst setting like a private school sign, if you will. It seems to me that you would want to stick with something, not the sign that you have, but something that is along those lines. Uh, yeah, and I, I would agree with that. And, and I think the other thing that I want to just bring up is, is there's sort of a wayfinding problem. And then there's the sort of site sign for the, you know, sort of formal acknowledgement of the school. So I think from a wayfinding, like you're driving through town circumstance, the sight lines are way better on the uh, East Common, the common ground there. So from a wayfinding standpoint, we might need something on that side of the street to point to the school because I think the sight lines, you know, unless you're going to make a, a chevron shaped sign that has that points in both directions, north and south, it's going to be hard to make that visible for someone driving down from either direction. Um, I think the, the the sort of reaction time and 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 whatnot is going to be tough. So I think of the sign, the sight sign. Um, which is a you know a bit more of an aesthetic and 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 uh, um, you know um, it, it, aesthetic feature for the school is, is is you know would would be uh, you know if it's a single sort of sign if it's not the one that drivers use to locate the driveway that's okay uh, would be one thing I would say um, and I think the other is, is if we were going to make it both serve the purpose of wayfinding as well as being uh, you know, a, a sort of uh, aesthetic feature, then um, it may have to sit too close to the sidewalk, or I'd be concerned to get it, it would have to be so close to, say, the sidewalk uh, to have a sufficient length of sight line for, for drivers. So those are just a couple of things. But I think to, you know, other points that are made is that, you know, the, the sort of less substantial sign is fine, you know, as far as like the, you know, masonry sort of stuff. I don't think we need that for sure. Jonathan. Okay, too many buttons to click. Um, I'm curious about, this is gonna sound a little off tangent or a little off topic, but to me, in my mind about signs, it, it interacts with how the, um, how that, I wanna call it an inter intersection, is kind of an intersection, but how the, the final solution <laughs> is resolved for how the the driveway at meets uh, is that Southeast Street or North or well whatever it is the 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 main road right now they've you know put up those temporary lights and they put lots of white painted X's on the ground and that has seemed to have done a pretty good job in, in getting the traffic improved uh, mm -hmm. through there but I'm wondering if anyone knows is that a permanent thing or is there a, a a more permanent replacement the town is is exploring for that piece and or are we going to revert to a, a to what it was before <laughs> that might impact sight lines so you know those lights that are there are temporary lights um purchased at a guilford's recommendation and I don't think Guilford intends to keep them there. Um, they, I do think they've served the purpose of um, not necessarily signalizing that intersection, which was what they were originally intended for, but just the fact that they're flashing and has made people slow down and allowed for the adjustment. Um, I mean, I think it's a really good question, Jonathan, that the town, the, there, there is a larger, larger plan to make that intersection into a pretty large rotary that's being studied. Um, so it's hard for me to imagine if that's the sort of longer term plan than creating another signalized intersection. But whether Guilford might choose to keep the temporary lights there longer is a great question. I, we don't know the answer to that. Painting the intersection hasn't been discussed, but I think is also potentially a good idea just to keep that, people. Hey, from... I, I'm, I'm astounded at how much the painting of the, the intersection is done. People actually don't, you know, have their cars standing in it. Yeah. Lights, so. No, it's, it's made a big difference, but it was, 
it was an experiment and probably needs to be preserved in perpetuity <laughs> so. in some form yes can is it i mean we've given kind of general comment if the sign is not part of the if the, the lighting becomes part of the project but the sign does not how does this town procure procure that then do you know kathy how that would work okay no no and uh it well it would have to be a a, a purchase piece jonathan and so whether this would ever count toward CPAC or it would have to be one of our uh, capital requests. You know, it, it's a, this is a town facility. No, the, the, the school budget could pay for it. It could be procured yeah. separately, like separately. Okay. furniture and equipment okay. and, and other things. Yeah. And being signed only, it depends on the value, whether, you know, there's uh, established uh, statutory requirements for best practices. If it's under ten thousand, I think it was, and then there's something else. If it was thirty, sometimes those numbers change around and aren't. The, some of them have been the same for thirty years, but it can be done, and it's a way to kick that final decision down the road. Yeah. Um. Till, till everything's decided, and um. Uh, talking about sight lines of the sign, the other thing you have the driveway to consider is sight lines of people leaving the site and not having it, the sign block it. Right. Uh, but as far as, given that folks seem to be coalescing away from the heavy construction, four foot deep concrete foundation, masonry sign, and leading toward a post-mounted type uh, more modest installation, the real cost of that would be having ground lights uh, at both locations, which we could do and we can say in the bid documents, final location be coordinated with owner's sign. I think that sounds great, Rick. I agree. So I see Deb and Rupert hands are up. Deb? Yeah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I like modest. Um, I like easy to see. I had actually the same idea that Doug had about just sticking it on the other side of the road, but then that becomes difficult when you're talking about lighting, or at least from this person's point of view. And um, I do think those axes at, go a long way. <laughs> So even in the long run, if we don't have that flashing light, I think just having those big X's on the on the on the macadam would is 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 great. Rupert, uh, here's a thought. Given the um, the line of sight concerns, both for wayfinding and for people leaving the driveway, it occurs to me we might end up wishing we had two signs for the main entrance, one for the northbound and one for the south. So I'm going to suggest that we have the bid uh, go out for three sign lights because it's easier to take away a, a light than it is to add it. Uh, I don't know what you guys think. Mm -hmm. So, Rupert, just for my notes, so the three are one at the south entrance and two at the north entrance. Yeah, that's what I'm that's thinking. Yeah. yeah. If I mean, I don't know if we're going to light the south entrance, but if we have in the contract for three lights for signs, then I think we're we're better covered. So, and then the only thing I would have, I I kind of agree with that. And then the other is Deb, when you say easy to read, big letters are easy to read, and fewer words are easy to read. It just, you know, there's one thing telling you about information about the school itself. Um, so we can do it because the other thing Fort River is, is an en enormous recreation area, but I don't want to add the words and recreation. We just want to people know that this is an entrance. This is an exit. This is where the buses and other things go. So it's, it's traffic. So I think we could later figure out um, something the way Fort River now has a Bienvenido. It has, you know, a, a welcoming. So I just keeping it reason I, I like short is you can't read easily a complicated sign. You need it to be 
big with just a few words on it. So that that's my only thought. Doug is kind of nodding his heads. So did we give you enough um, to to go on? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a, so what I think we'll direct the electrical engineer to do, and for each side of the sign that's being lit, it wouldn't be a single fixture. I'm going to assume two fixtures would adequately light the entire text of the sign, and we'll have uh, both sides lit a total of four fixtures at the south entrance, two sign locations lit at the north entrance, a total of eight up there. Uh, once you bring power to a driveway, it's not that big a deal to go across this, go across to catch the other side. And so we'll add that to the site electrical uh, straight away. And uh, thank you for uh, the consideration. And and I'm Doug. I saw your hand go up and down, but you had told me you could only be with us for an hour. Is that is that still? Are you running up against a hard stop? Yeah. What I might try to do is switch to my phone. I've got to travel. I'm going to be in Florence, not Italy. Well, that'd be nice. But uh, Florence, uh, <laughs> Mass for noon, so I've got to get there. Um, the, the other hill town. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so I may try to switch to phone and be via phone. So I'll try to do that. But I I will be sort of jumping off at eleven thirty. Okay, so um, Rick and Tim, I know there were some other uh, pieces um, finishing up on things we talked about. Yep, uh, that was probably the most meaningful discussion. The other items are uh, confirmations of things that uh, you asked us to look at last time. So actually, I'm going to share uh, before and after of some of the things that we looked at. So give me a second, I'll pull up a video. Um, <laughs> So this is the video that you saw the last time we met. Um, and then I'm going to pause right here because uh, on what is the music room left of the main entrance, you can see uh, the building signage. It says Four River Elementary School. Um, again, um, you know, pending final decision on what the name is, but that's what we're going with until told, told otherwise. Um, and then what you actually asked us to look at uh, when we last took this uh, walk around the building um, and I'm gonna in the interest of time skip ahead um, was the south side there were two areas uh, one was the mason repatterning that we have on the third floor mechanical room exterior which is um, similar to the window and accent panels that we have on the rest of the building but it is a blank wall there are no windows there are no penetration so it's just sort of patterning to fill up the blank space and then there was some um, comments on the darker color around the uh, gymnasium, uh, which is sort of the dark color of the field. And, uh, you know, there were a few comments that, that maybe the contrast there is a, a little too much and it ties back to the building and doesn't let it be its own thing. So we just have an alternate option um, to share. <sighs> So again, starting at the beginning and everything up until this point is the same. Um, uh, you know, there, there was a fairly lively discussion in the library last time about just letting a blank wall be a blank wall. Um, and it is a minor change, but there's a change of material there. And uh, you can see at the mechanical area, it's simply the field. And that field, while not rendering perfectly here, is a blend of three colors. Um, and then the accent band around the gymnasium is sort of toned down a little bit. There's still contrast, there's still texture but it allows the, um, and maybe the view 
that's not in the canopy of the PV would be a little bit better to see all this, but you can see that the uh, gymnasium is a little bit more of its own thing here. Um, and then I want to, one more item to show you to fully flesh out this conversation. So normally we don't like to show photos of materials because they don't do them justice. Um, but these are, um, and 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 the photos are not here to convey the absolute color, but to convey the similarities, which I think you can read. So the, the panel on the right you saw in person last time. And then the two panels to the left are the closest matches that we have from different manufacturers. Uh, the, they have two different rather than three different boards because two of them are repped by one company and one by the other. But, but the point of this is these are three different dark bricks, three different brands, blends of the light brick. And as part of our public construction in Massachusetts, we have to name three equals. Um, the, the point of doing this is to say that we are fairly confident that the materials that we have been showing you are going to be pretty close to what you end up getting. And, um, you know, on for whatever, that's not always the case, um, but uh, we have a reasonable amount of confidence that that will be here. Um, and then the colors that... Um, you were seeing in those renderings are closer to these colors. And when I say these colors, I mean the colors that you saw in person when we were the last time rather than the photo, because, uh, you know, even when we were in the library last time, it looked different on my screen. It looked different on the projector, oh. as you all remember. And so I, I have no idea what these colors look like on your screen right now, but hopefully um, you can remember um, what they look like and sort of make that connection between that and the rendering. So with that, I'm just going to go back to the renderings. So the darker brick that you see on the exterior is the material on the left and those color boards. The lighter brick here is the material on the right. And that would be at the same as the accent band around the gym and then the field of the gym itself is a ground face cmu which is similar in value but uh was not in those photos and we had it at a meeting a while ago but uh you know rather than show different pictures of materials that show up differently on screen we're just gonna use the relative values of the renderings so th that is just what we wanted to put in front of you and what we are carrying in the bid documents unless it's not which you remember the discussion from last time on the exterior. I'm looking for hands. Um, Bruce. Tim, uh, Rick, I, I think well of the second video, I think you've done, uh, well, I remember we discussed and asked certainly so far as the uh, simplification of the uh, facade above the uh, and the southern entry, I I I do prefer the uh, this this rendition, and I think also uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 change uh, that's been made around the library. I think that's an improvement as well. Uh, I wasn't the advocate for that, so but uh, regardless, I I think the that the second video uh, as the, as represented by the second video it would be my preferred alternative so i asked does anyone have a different opinion because i agree with what bruce just said i'm seeing doug shaking his head with in an affirmative and this is tim you said this is what's in the documents now in terms of color spe specification or or dec decorative or is about to be yeah Yes, that is true. And then, to be honest, changing colors in the limited areas is not a big lift, but uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we're not having any conversations after uh, they go out to bid and just before. Um, and then, you know, we'll... moving on to the final interior part, we can clarify that. Uh... Okay, Jonathan, I saw your hand go up. 
I am very comfortable with what the, the second, you know, the iteration that, that was presented second. Yep. Excellent. This happily is one of those by the end of the day changes we can afford. <laughs> Luce, did your hand go back up? I'm sorry. Uh, about I'm just about to take it down, but I just want to thank uh, uh, Tim and Rick and everybody else. Uh, I I continue to be impressed and and uh, so very comfortable and confident that uh, we've got good people on our, our side here. And this is just one more step that demonstrates that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Tim, did you have one on interior also, or is this is this the the list you want to go over? Uh, that is the list. So I, I wanted to say about the interior. Um, sometimes before we oh, go out to bed, but and I see. Just wait one second, Jonathan. Is your hand still up, or did you? Okay, sorry. Go on, Tim. No. Um, sometimes before we go out to bed, but often after, uh, we develop a full color schedule. Um, essentially it's going to show what color each wall in each room is going to be painted the way it's specified this room has two colors of paint this room has one color or whatever um none of which changes the cost uh, it's just a matter of what goes where and and making sure that we're happy with the all of the colors and the locations of all the colors and that we will um compile produce and review with you after the documents go out. Um, but other than that, the interior colors are largely the same. Um, we did add tile at the stairs. Um, and then I was just going to show very quickly um, a video that shows it on two walls where the past video you saw was on one wall. Uh, but that again falls into the conversation of the color schedule. So the final selections we can review at a later date, but uh, quickly give me one second to share the last little bit. Um, so these are the videos that you saw last time, and you can see that in the main stair or the stair that connects the media center, the lobby, um, there is the colorful tile on one wall, and then the other wall was uh, painted uh, when the numbers came in favorably at 90%. Uh, for the sake of durability cleaning, uh, we extended that to the other wall, so I was just going to quickly show you uh, what that looks like from the inside. You see that up there? So turning around, uh, looking into the gym, and then this rendering is a bit washed out, unfortunately. Uh, and my, I don't know how it looks on your screen, but you can see that we're sort of continuing the pattern, and this um, colorful use of tile will, you know, take up the whole volume of the stair rather than being one wall. And you know that is the case in this stair and stair B and the other end of the building. So on the second floor, I don't have the ability to turn my head, but you can look into the gymnasium through windows here and into the library. And it just, it's its a bit more enveloping um, the amount of color. So I wanted to make sure that that was on your radar. But in terms of uh, what we are looking for, in terms of comment today, um, you know, those are the items that we've already discussed. Oh, I, I should mention that uh, we also raised the height of the uh, 
bookcases in the library. And that's what they look like. Ah, that was Ka Ka Kathy saying we we might want another shelf and build it in now. Great. We do have yeah. another shelf. Yeah, no, I, I just always worry about changes that are hard to change late things that are hard to change later um that's great so thank you so when you said next time so we have our july meeting will be after the bid documents are out um you know about so that's when you know anyway that that's when we meet next and i think we're done with our various subcommittee meetings if I think that's unless you say we need to convene again, cor correct? I mean, we don't have anything else scheduled other than a monthly meeting is the other way of saying it. We do not have anything scheduled. Uh, when we do compile a color schedule, we will um, distribute. We can meet if necessary, and we will certainly accept any comments in any way you want to provide or review them. Um, uh, maybe we get this meeting back together for one time uh, after the bid documents go out and, and color selections are finalized everywhere. But um, we do not have anything or plan to have anything scheduled uh, beyond the regular committee meetings going forward. That could also be the fall once we start to get some actual tile submissions and, and yeah. pairing, pairing paint with tile. Yeah, I, I think it's near to final, final, you know, be, before so at that point you've you've got the contractors and the subs. So you, which of those stone? I guess you know that you've you've got who have we got to work with? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as 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 good as the sample brick that we've gotten, and as close as matches to the design intent, there's always a chance that some material that we're counting on is not quite what we wanted. So we will want to discuss with you how we react to that, whether we change the color of other items to work with that or, you know, there's still a process. And Tim, to butt in, Kathy, if I may, it sounds like that would probably need to be a face-to-face, -face, uh, something in conjunction with a site meeting or something, right? Uh, yeah, and we will be on site weekly. So uh, hopefully that would be pretty easy to schedule. So I think um, I'm looking if anyone else has any other um, any other comments. Uh, we do have one member of the public and I think we posted this, we, we do allow. So any other comments to the subcommittee? So, um, so um, we're open for public comments if there are any. Okay, not seeing any. I think um, we are, we're all thanking you. Uh, for, um, I just feel like sometimes with these videos, it's instant gratification to see what you just said, the before and the after. So thanks very much for take, doing that. And um, I think we're ready to adjourn. And we've got this new practice of a motion to adjourn. So I make a motion to adjourn. I second okay. the motion. Oops, everyone, everyone seconded. Doug, Doug, yes, Kathy, yeah, yes, Jonathan, yes, Bruce, yep, Deb, yep, and Rupert. Affirmative. Thank you, everyone. And now I can actually say, have a really good weekend. And uh, we don't, we have no more meetings for a month. Yep. Enjoy, enjoy yourselves, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.